Call to order, and it's being um, televised on RCT <coughs> on Verizon Channel 33 and Comcast Channel 22, and you can uh, find it at www.rctv.org. And the first item on the agenda is at 7 o'clock is a notice of intent 270-0714, 135, 139, and 149R rear. Howard Street, Map 10, Lots 75, 76, and 77, Infrastructure, infrastructure Holdings, LLC, Greenwood. Good evening. Um, Bill Hall with Civil Design Consultants. As you may recall, this is a six-lot subdivision off of Howard Street. Uh, we had a meeting a few weeks ago on this uh, notice of intent, and we have not revised plans at this moment. Um, we had a site walk a week or two ago to observe the wetlands on the property and I believe the purpose of tonight's meeting should be to discuss uh, what we've seen on the site walk and uh, how we can move forward with the wetland remediation. So I think we're going to discuss that and I also have Maureen Harold here from Rose Environmental uh, to speak about the wetlands. Okay, we, we took a walk. Um, I forget which day it was, if it's cold. <laughs> um, Mike Flynn, Chuck Taroni, myself. I don't think there was anybody else. Um, and we started on the north. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Dave and Nico were there. Right? <laughs> Hard to ignore Dave, I'm sorry. Dave Panat was also <laughs> present. I did make it there after work. Okay, and then Carl Sacconi. Uh, um, came to the site a little uh, after the site walk. Um, when we came in off of, uh, get, what's that street up, up the top? Howard the, Street. Howard Street to the east. Um, we noticed that there had been, um, we did see a, a small PVC pipe that came off of Howard Street. And then it kind of um, came, um, daylighted near kind of opposite that structure of the house next door to the right uh, and in that area we saw some uh, wetland vegetation um, specifically um, uh, sensitive fern and there's some other um, vegetation I'm not sure what it was and then we walked further down and it was pretty scrubby but uh, it seemed to be uh, it seemed to be some kind of connection, and then we walked. I walked. All, we walked all the way down to the end of the property to the south portion, um, and uh, picked up the wetland flags that had been put there by Norse Environmental. Some of the flags were down, um, and, and they seemed to be have been misplaced too. I don't know if you had picked that up on that. Um, no, we, we flagged this back in August of last year. Okay, all right. So you're right, they could have been down. Um, Chuck, do you want to add to this? Oh, and we took some, um, Chuck took some um, augers as well in certain areas. And we did observe um, pretty high groundwater in those areas. Do you yeah. want to elaborate on that, Chuck? Yeah, so uh, where we were looking was in this area of uh, <coughs> sensitive fern here. So we did our first auger in this area here. And then another one in there. Each time, except for this one here, which was we didn't do any auger in there, just here and here. Each time we found uh, uh, got an organic layer that was <coughs> down. <coughs> 18 inches, maybe more, um, and I think that uh, the commission felt like it was an area that they wanted to investigate more, and we have to be out there when the, uh, know, the conditions are appropriate to, for the commission to understand whether it's a wetland or it's you know, up. So that's what I saw. I, you know, the only thing I would add to that is, is, and this is certainly not an indicator of wetland, but what, what is evident there, uh, as we were doing probes, is you, know, you go five feet in either direction of that location, the ground's frozen, you can't take a probe. Right, right. Uh, right there you can, and it's, you 
or any area that water's groundwater's high, right? The ground the, the ground has frozen at that location, which is a good indicator. If I could just maybe quickly just review the site conditions with the commission and just let you know how we determine that ditch and why we determine it that way. Um, and then we can maybe move forward from there. Sure. All right. Jack, do you mind if I cover you? This time. All right. All right, so these are just kind of generic plans that I wrote on just to kind of illustrate the site conditions. We don't mind sharing. So the commission made me call the site fairly flat. Okay. The contours that you see on this plan, they're one foot contours. Typically they're two feet, two foot, but they're one foot. So what's highlighted in green is the wetland that we fact. Um, what's highlighted in yellow here, that's the drainage ditch that's out in the field. Now you can see a number of arrows pointed. That's the direction of the surface runoff flow, where the water would flow off the surface. There's a high point here where the water splits. There's a high point here where it splits. In this area, it flows further back. And also towards Howard Street, it flows towards the drainage ditch. So it makes perfect sense that somebody made this drainage ditch because a good amount of the water from the surrounding lot is flowing towards that area. Um, the drainage ditch isn't considered a stream. The definition of a stream is that it has to flow due to hydraulic gradient within or out of a resource area. So we don't have a resource area up gradient. If there was a wetland up gradient, that would be considered a stream because it's flowing out of the resource area. So this is why we had characterized it as a drainage ditch. Now, we did a number of deep holes in the fall. And as the commission knows, a water table fluctuates, right? So August, September, October, November, you have a low water table. In the spring, you know, March, April, May, whenever the spring melt is, the snow melt, you have a high water table. Well, this past fall, we had a substantial amount of rain. Um, the water table was at least normal, if not above normal, when we did the test. Test pit two is located behind um, House number 139. Did that, that test pit is currently at elevation 162.5. We found the seasonal high water table to be 30 inches below that. So two and a half feet below the surface. So the seasonal high water table is about 160 feet if you took the soil below that. We also did test pit number three, which is circled on your plan. That's at elevation 163. We found the estimated seasonal high water table to be at 34 inches, um, or 2.8 feet below the surface. So this is certainly a high water table. Wouldn't surprise me if the neighborhood has a number of flooding concerns and issues because the water table is fairly high. Now the definition of a hydric soil is water at or near the surface for a significant portion of the year. At or near the surface is 12 inches. A significant portion of the, day, of the year is 10 to 20 days within the growing season. So if we have the water table at test pit two at 160 feet in elevation, and at test pit three, we have it at 160.2 feet, this drainage swale flows from elevation 162 down to 161 contour, which is near A11, A10. Our argument is that the area in here, at least by soils wise, it doesn't meet the definition of a hydric soil because we're at least two feet above that. 
Again, the definition of a hydric soil is water at or near the surface for a significant portion of the year. At or near the surface is 12 inches. So the water table has to be within a foot. Check so I, I understand that. I guess your 161 to 162 elevation of the drainage swale, though, is based on these contours. I, I think it's clear, as I look at these contours, that the, the drainage swale really hasn't been picked up from an elevation standpoint. I mean, that's correct. This is you can see. You, you, I go out there and I can very plainly see the depression associated with the drainage swale. I look at this, and you're right. It looks like a very flat site. So I, I guess I don't know that, you know, that 161 to 162, you're at 12 inches to 24 inches. However, if you just drop six inches, you're at that elevation. You're at one, you're at 160 and a half, you're within 12 inches. So I, I think understanding the elevation of that drainage swale, much, much more than just these lines going across would be something that would be really interesting. Right, absolutely. So you're correct that this drainage swale wasn't micro, you know, survey the topo of that swale. Um, so you're yeah, absolutely correct about that. But this was survey. Professional land surveyor went out and, and did shoot the site, just not the swale. So, so Maureen, you know, and I'm thinking about that, and upstream of the dotted yellow um, swale line, I see obligate vegetation uh, as a sensitive fern, um, right. not, not just that little patch. I was, I was sorry, I apologize, I was mixed up, <laughs> okay. south and north. Um, there was a patch of sensitive fern, and it wasn't little patch it was you know a nice linear patch right at the end of that black pvc and then you know as you as you walk further down um yeah. towards the wetland it was kind of scrubby and yeah there was to, uh, you know, undulating topography but i still saw some kind of squishy i felt some squishy um underfoot and i saw some more obligate wetland species you know being the uh, sensitive fur my, my thought or my explanation for that is that Chuck had mentioned that it had a topsoil of 18 inches. If you have a deep topsoil that's moist and thick, it, it'll grow a sensitive or a cinnamon fern because the topsoil is so deep. Yeah, but you have to have the you have to have the water too. It's not just it's not just the nutrients in the topsoil. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, the, if you have a nice topsoil, it can hold the water, and I believe it can grow those types of plants in that area. I just wanted to go over the site with the commission and. Um, you know, I know obviously there's some concerns about the ditch. I just kind of wanted to highlight where the drainage went. <laughs> Makes sense that there's a drainage swale in that location. My opinion is that it's a drainage swale. It's not a wetland. It's not an intermittent stream. Um, I certainly hear from the commissions you have concern about that. So. Any other comments? Yeah, I think, I mean, the only thing that I would add is that we were walking on the east side of the flag wetlands. <clears throat> there was one area where I stumbled into and uh, my foot sunk down in it and I just stuck the auger in and went right up to the handle without uh, any refusal. So it was kind of an odd spot yeah. down it's like by five, six, and seven. That area. Um, by three and two. Okay. Maybe four. Which, which you know, again, lines up <coughs> a little, a little bit because similar to what we've been talking about in general, as you, you know, what I see is this flagged area, and and it is flat out there. I, I, I have less concerns about what you map there, but I do think there were some locations that could have gone either way. It, it is very flat, but the contours seem to suggest, you know, the contours help the argument for the drainage ditch. They seem to suggest otherwise in this, this wetland area where, you know, you've got that line going across 
elevation 158, just you know, a couple hundred feet downstream of where you're doing test pits. I mean, that's a big gradient. Uh, I, I'm not sure where you're talking. So 158. <coughs> Oh, right yeah. Yeah. Yep. And this was an area of concern. Yeah, that's that's where area, uh, that's where Chuck had his auger go down. I mean, we can certainly take a look at that area. I'm I'm hearing that from the commission, um, and that's not a problem. I mean, obviously, it's an area. A wetland isn't a definitive point in the sand. It's an area, so it can move a few feet here, here. Um, I guess it's how the commission wants to proceed with that. Um, if you want to do a third party review or an on site visit or. If the, if the client would be, oh, I'm not going to speak for the entire commission, but I, it might not be, <clears throat> in my mind, it might not be a bad idea to think about a, a third party review because this is such a flat site. <coughs> and you could have, oh, I guess, oh no, that's my car, sorry. Um, <coughs> you can have, you know, uh, you know, some wetland up here and some wetland down there. So I don't think that that would be a bad <coughs> idea to do. Um, I'm a little concerned about the, you know, the weather right now. If that, it's, it's amenable for, or a good idea to do it at the at this stage, you know, with the um, frozen soil conditions. You know, we could certainly. That's the commission. If, the, if that's the route the commission wants to go, we can certainly start processing that. In terms of, I'm not sure if the commission has a specific consultant you use, or you send out a proposal to a couple of consultants. But it's been such a funky winter where we've had frozen conditions and then 60 degree days that I would hate to push this off when we might be able to get a good warm spell and better off having someone on board would be my, my opinion and having them wait yeah until uh, in in the answer to your question uh, we've sent out we've, we've had one actually similar uh, close to the site on Randall Road and what we did was we sent out a request for proposals to certain other uh, consultants and got those in and reviewed those right. it took like a month or so that's that's understandable I mean I would expect a month anyhow just to be able to set it up and get on that individual's agenda and then meet them all there Take a look. Okay. I think a month is optimistic. Um, it's probably taking months to How do other members of the commission feel oh. month that <coughs> about that? Weeks. So, okay. so let me, I'm just going to say one thing that I think that this commission could, under spring conditions, delineate this wetland and approve it themselves. Um, and I think that in winter conditions, I do agree with getting a third party consultant. So I think time frame of that makes a big difference. So I just wanted you to understand month, month and a half. Okay. Well, obviously in terms of acts to run time is of the essence. So as we'd like to resolve the issue with the wetland boundary sooner rather than later, so if that adjustments need to be made to the plan or buildings need to be shifted or what have you, that we can just keep moving the process along. Especially if something changes down in that lower corner, Chuck said it's all going on, because that's going to change your whole um, wetlands basin there. Absolutely. Setbacks from the house, that's a that's a big change. That could be a potentially a big change, so. Right. Um, Do I hear a motion to? So, so I just want to make sure I understand Chuck's. Chuck, you feel like we could delineate this line in the spring, um, but if we were to try to push push schedule and the applicant's interest in and get something done in the likely at this point March time frame, mm -hmm. 
one third party party rule. I mean, at that point, we're almost into the spring anyways. I know that's what that's I'm thinking. The point I was making. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's that's what you're trying to get at is is you feel like a month and a half of trying to get a third party review on board, we could we may figure this out. It may be the point where this commission would delineate that line. I mean, how long does it take with the Randall Road? It took. It seemed like. Added Four months. a few months to the process. Mm -hmm. I, I don't disagree. I guess the, the question would be um, <coughs> the drainage ditch. I, I, and we've gone out with you before and just taken holes where we're all, all of us are all looking at the same thing. And maybe that will help the process where we don't need a third party review. But I, I guess if we're just at a, a disagreement about whether this is a ditch, you know, I, I think a third party review is valuable in that sense. But that being said, that doesn't prevent us from trying to keep this going with the just the commission and help the applicant. And, and maybe there is an agreement. So we, we could prepare documents and not send out an RFP. So that's but, what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, but be prepared that we, you know, understanding that we may want that third party review if we can't come to an agreement. Let's start the process. And it, I mean, this winter has been pretty mild. Right. And maybe we'll have some opportunity in less than, you know, six weeks or so. But my guess is, is if we started with a third party review, I, I think it took a couple of months to get some on and then, you know, their <coughs> schedule was, it, it, it seemed like it dragged on a bit. If I may suggest, my preference is a third party review, um, just because, as you mentioned with the drainage ditch, if, if that's, if the commission thinks it's a resource area, and I don't think that it is, then we might be at the third party review Come you know, two months two from, months from now. So then we're delayed, what, three or four months. So my preference is, and I'm requesting the commission to send it out to a third party review. Um, obviously, it's up to the commission. I would agree with that point, you know, I would hate to come two months down the road. Yeah, we're, we're at odds and, I think and we're, we like want a, a third party anyway. At least anyways, get so. it going, get yeah. the process going. Yeah. Um, and we have, you know, we have some documents from a couple of years ago that we can uh, start to, to use and, and send it out to some consultants. So do I hear a motion? Do I need to make well, um, we need to continue, number one. We do, but I think some people are here from the oh. and may want to talk. Oh, that's right. Please. I'm sorry. Um, your gentleman, this gentleman um, brought in a um, some information. And in your name, sir? Yeah, my name is Chuck Castelluccio. I live at uh, 62 West Crawford. Right, this house here. Okay. Okay. So um, I wanted to come in. Uh, I, I know that you're concerned with the wetlands area, and I've got some other points to make regarding water in the area, because I, I know a lot of these people uh, have concern about groundwater. And the groundwater is part of the water cycle and, uh, and needs to be considered as well. So um, you know, I'm not a drainage expert. I'm not a stormwater expert, but I am a geologist. And um, I do groundwater consulting for a living. Um, I think most of us here are concerned with flooding. You know, we've experienced flooding, and uh, you know, I think all of the neighbors around, even up the hill, uh, up Dobbins Hill, have experienced flooding in this area. So what I did was I, uh, I prepared some maps based on what well, I had been prepared just to, to kind of get a, a, you know, another look at it. And what I did was I, I took the drainage plan that had been prepared under current conditions and it was showing a divide kind of in this area here with a lot of the groundwater from this area going here and, you know, groundwater would flow. Uh, along the, the red contour, or along the red arrows, toward the wetland area in that area. Over on this side, we've got what, what they've shown as arrows coming off to the, to the east, and I would say probably to the northeast based on topography. I think what this shows is that, you know, as much of, as, as two-thirds of the water 
that's on the property now is, is kind of heading in this direction, and one third of it is heading in the direction of the property to the east and to the northeast. Um, I'm trying to keep it brief, Joe. Um, for, for people, for people around the surrounding area, um, what we see in our basements is groundwater. It, it's not, for the most part, uh, storm water. We see we, we try and drain our houses away from uh, drain the water away from our house. So we're seeing groundwater coming in, and this area of the site is the lowest topographic area of of the uh, entire property, and. The area over here, and, and even more so over here, is, is topographically lower. I know that they've got the bottom of their basin, and I'll show that in a minute, at 158. The whole area back here is at 158, and it starts at 157 here and goes down. So it's <coughs> even lower. So this next figure, This next figure here is is, uh, is the site under current conditions with the drainage, kind of as, as they've shown it. All of the all of the drainage is going to come off the impervious areas, um, you know, the roadways, the homes, the, the driveways, and they've got it all directed toward the pond, the infiltration pond. Some of the water will be coming off and going to the east, but not as great amount. The area for the wetland is is now a much smaller, there's, there's a much smaller area feeding the wetland, and it, it could have an adverse effect on the wetland. Uh, oh, by the way, it, you know, I, I don't think a, a wetland typically ends at a property boundary like that, and so I, I'm suggesting that at one time when these houses were built in the 1940s or so, that you know, the wetland extended into this area, and that's why, you know, at least the homes in this area are seeing uh, water in the basements. So now what we're seeing is we're directing five times the amount of water to this area that we were seeing before. So all of the surface water coming off of these paved areas now, the homes, is, is being directed to this area here. And it's in this storm water and, and from the precipitation, and it goes to the pond where it's supposed to infiltrate into the ground. What we can see from that, though, is that from the groundwater standpoint, which are, the, which are the blue lines, which I'm trying to represent the groundwater flow, which would be to the northeast, approximately, in this area. Um, what we could see from that, it, with all of the water that's coming into this basin here, five times the amount that we normally see in the lowest topographic area, we can see a mounding effect on the groundwater where the groundwater will come off of this area and flow in all directions. In addition, because of this mounding here, we'll see a, a, a change in the groundwater flow to go around the basin. And with less water infiltrating the ground here, we could see a change in the groundwater pattern flow. next figure is, is basically showing the same thing but it's under it's under conditions it's under conditions where um, either we've got a higher water table than we suspect out there a rainy period or it could be represented from uh, oh, like a 100 year storm where we see six inches in 24 hours so now we've got a lot more water coming into the pond. As a matter of fact, as much as three feet could come into the pond for a, for a, a six inch, 100 year rain event. We get a, a lot more groundwater mounding, a lot more movement of groundwater around it, and a, a lot less water infiltrating the ground here. As 
a matter of fact, uh, a, a six inch 100 year storm would amount to three feet of water in this area, about 30,000 cubic feet of water, or 224,000 gallons during a, during a six inch rain event that would be coming into this area. Over the course of a year, if in Massachusetts the average rainfall is 40 inches, that's one and a half million gallons of water that would be coming into this area over the course of a year. In an area where we've got the wetland or part of the, we've got a, a very low topographic area here and down through here. And I, I show that on the next. So this is a, a topographic map taken from the NOI um, that basically shows the 158-foot contour, which is, is kind of the, the low part of where the uh, infiltration basin will be. And we see 158 in the wetland, but you can see that we've got 158 here. It's just as low, if not lower, through this area than it is in the wetland itself. I, and I know that the wetland gets a little help from, from the piping that, that goes underground here to help drain it during flooding, but we don't have that luxury in this area. The homes in this area have their, their basement elevations are at 150 to 154, something like that. But well, we've got, you know, water pooling in this area. I'll show you what it looks like. Typically over the course of a, of a year, we'll see several wet rain events. Or, or during a major rain event, we'll see a pooling of water, something like this, in our backyards. And I'm, I'm not talking about winter time when the ground is frozen, uh, although although it looks that way right now because the ground is frozen and there's water pooling back there. Um, but um, with, with the calculations that I did, if, if we had one of those uh, uh, hundred year storms, six inches of rain, uh, we would overflow the emergency overflow at 159 and a half. We would be overflowing the 158 and a half uh, outlet that, that's proposed for this area. And it would become uh, surface water, which would drain to lower areas and like I said, you know, we've got a 158-foot contour in through here, 157-foot contour here. Um, those are all lower areas. So as this water is pouring out, it's it's not being directly directed into the wetland area. It's going to the low area. And if you look from the back, you will see that the topography is sloping down toward the homes in the back and, and not as much toward the wetland area. Where's the, where's the outlet? The, there's a, an outlet right in my backyard here. It comes out right here. And then this is the overflow here. Okay. So this outlet is building out 80 here. feet. No, no, no. 80 feet off of the back of the property here. But what I did was I contoured in the approximate area for if, if 230,000 cubic feet of water is coming out, or 224,000 gallons, it would cover an area something like this. Because it, it, at some point, the water table comes up high enough that it doesn't allow infiltration. And the, the method of, of determining the water table out here is subjective. If we want to determine the depth of groundwater, we should put in some piezometers or some wells and gauge them. I mean, I, I know that the developer probably doesn't have the time um, to to see you know, seasonal variations or what have you. But you know, with the climate the way it is and the changes that we're seeing, we're seeing more adverse conditions. You know, I, I think. 
I think more time needs to be put into you know evaluating conditions here. So I've got some closing comments. Kind of keep it moving. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. And then I've got some questions, uh, and the questions I can pose afterwards. I think several of them have been answered. You know, they've been out to the site. But um, I put here um, to base the average estimated seasonal groundwater <coughs> high table on uh, circumstantial evidence when it would affect so many of us is irresponsible, uh, but likely profitable for somebody. The best way to determine the elevation is to put in the piezometers and the wells. In addition, a groundwater model could be constructed that would help us to determine it. You could put in variations in the groundwater elevations. You could put in variations in the amount of rainfall, and it would help to model where we might expect to see um, rainage and flood. Um. And that's that's really what I have, but uh, okay. like, like I said, uh, you know, this area is so topographically low at this point to add the kind of water that we're talking about to this area. It's irresponsible, and I, I you know I don't normally come to these things, but I want to go on record because if the project goes through and we have problems. Okay. Yeah. Go some ahead. Of the things that I just. It's, with all due respect, um, you said you, you, that five times the water that's on that site is going to go into that, that area. That five times, I don't know where you're getting the five times water coming from other places that are off this site, but that's water that would be on that site anyway. And it flows to that low point anyway. Well, let me, let me speak to that. Let me, okay. let me let's just continue. Okay. And you said that you have five times the water. It's, yes, it's going into that infiltration basin, which is going to percolate that into the, the ground at a, a metered rate, much more than it already is currently. <coughs> so it's going to be controlled, and that water that's coming off the impervious area, it, areas there are going to, is going to be controlled, and that's why that, that infiltration basin is there. Any of the people that are getting water in those houses that are there now, their basement floors are probably six to seven feet below the grade that's on the outside of that. So anyone that's getting water, is going to get water anyway because of where the basement floor is. And I really don't believe that with the control that's here, you, you're you going to get any more. And, and, and I think the other thing that you're not taking into consideration is the undeveloped areas that are on the site where that entire wetland is there. That still is going to charge water into that through its natural gradient that already exists. So I don't think you're taking that into uh, into account either in your calculations what as to I, what, what you're I, looking at here. What, what I did was I calculated the impervious areas, which I, I believe have um, uh, curbs going through to keep the water from going to the grassy areas, and the, the areas of the driveways and coming off of the homes, and all of that water being direct in there comes out to five times the amount of water that would normally fall onto this area by precipitation. The, 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 okay, the rain me, that you're me, talking let me, about. Let me, no, let me stop me you there. Now. Let no, me finish no, now. Let me stop you there. But it falls by precip precipitation, and that's the low point. And you have a high point that's on the other area, other side of that site. Where is it going to go to? I'll tell you. The rain that's going to fall here is going to go down through the ground because right. it because it's it's permeable. It will allow the rain to fall through here, and it will become groundwater, and the groundwater will move. Right. You're taking what would have gone into the groundwater down here, and you're directing it as surface water into this area, and you're concentrating it. That entire that entire development is not impervious area. So you're discounting any non non pervious area. No, I'm not. I, I, what I did was I calculated the area. Oh, so you calculated the impervious the impervious area vis-a-vis -vis -vis the 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 retention ba basin. I did. D Dave, can I just offer that because you ha there have been a lot of numbers thrown around. Yo, it would. And I appreciate the presentation. It would be great. I know you've got a lot of notes there, but if you could summarize some of those yeah. so that we could actually look at some numbers. You know, similar, you know, as you were going through that, I was trying to look at their yeah. drainage report. Yeah. 
but you know, if, if you could prepare something to, to admit to Chuck, so that we could make it, you know, because, you know, saying something in the public meeting makes it part of the record, but if we could have the document so that everybody can look at those numbers and understand you know, where they're coming from, where you're getting them from, I think would add value. That way we can look. Because it, I, I don't well disagree with engineering needs I, to take a look. I don't disagree with some of Dave's points, but a, a lot of it is just not you know numbers that are presented right you know just from word of mouth, and, and we want to just look at it. I, I think that would add value. For us yes. to understand where those are coming from. Those aren't numbers. Your name, please. My name is Judy Council with you. I'm at 62 West Crawford. Thank you. Those are not numbers that are just word of mouth. Those are numbers that are factored in through measurements and determinations and mathematical equations. They're not word of mouth, just I think I'll say five times. They're actual. Uh, figures and calculations. Well, I appreciate that, but but if the applicant came here and said we're not going to increase groundwater and I'm not going to give you any calculations, you got to just trust me. You would you would yell at us if we just said okay, we believe that. So we just want to make sure we're looking at both sides. And, and all of this type of you know the hydrology goes through our engineering department as well because we're not experts at you know hydrology <coughs> groundwater. Um, Maureen, would you like? Yeah. Um, one thing I just like to follow up is um, one of the abutters mentioned putting in monitoring wells to determine the water table, and that's not a common practice in Massachusetts. Massachusetts requires you to be a state soil evaluator, which I am, which Steve Erickson is, as well as the town engineer was out there witnessing the deep holes and confirming the water tables. Okay. Yeah, that's, you know, I was looking at your test pit logs, but so Steve was out there and he was the one taking, he, he took the redoxymorphic snow. Steve, and myself, and the town, and the town engineer were out all there soil, so. certified soil evaluators, and that's who was qualified to determine the season high water tables out on any site, whether it's for drainage or basements, septic systems. And you, you had two test pits in the back there, TP5 yes. and TP6. Any other comments from the community? I'm good. Okay. I'd like just a little bit more explanation around what you've seen as far as like the uh, sensitive fur and some of the other obligates. I'm, I'm not really up on the terminology, but how does that impact the winds and kind of what we're looking at as far as um, the extension of this development? Um, oh, let me do a short version. The obligate, there are certain <coughs> species of vegetation that you find them uh, most of the time in a very wet condition. That's an obligate. Um, and then there's a facultative. All these cell scientists got together years ago and facultative, you know, maybe you'd find them in a wetland condition uh, 75 to 50 percent of the time. And it's the amount of those either obligates, facultative, and uh, that, you know, give you an indication that that may be a wetland right there. And then in Massachusetts and also under federal regulations, you also look at the the hydric soils that would support that kind of condition to, you know, support that kind of vegetation. That vegetation grows in an anaerobic condition. There's not a lot of oxygen. They're waterlogged. And then other species of, wet, uh, of vegetation can't stand the water and they need, you know, more air in their root system. And it's that dif difference between where that vegetation is and the wetland vegetation that kind of gives you an indication and then you do soil probes. And so we saw <coughs> some vegetation that would be indicative of a wetland area, so we knew that there was some water supporting those that vegetation closer. I guess I was wrong. It's on the southwest side um, um, near Howard Street. But as Maureen uh, from North Environmental said, that sometimes you know there are areas where there's soil that could uh, have a, a you know a support more water. In, a, in that kind of condition. But it's a question that we, we, you know, when we were out there, we did the probes and looked at the vegetation. So we have questions. Yeah. 
that's that's my short, long <laughs> version of that. I hope I answered your question. Yes, thank you, and I appreciate that you're looking into that a little bit more closely. I think I'd like a greater understanding, though, too, of the climate conditions about the different times of year because my lived experience at 1.9 Howard is that that land is very wet most of the year. So I just like a little bit more explanation about that. I don't know if Marvin wants to take that. I think she was originally talking about the different times of year and conditions. In terms of the water table? Or? Yeah, you just mentioned like a, an ideal time of year to again kind of test that and I'm just I'm not sure what you can test the water table any yeah. time of the year. You can determine it by looking at the soil profile. And they have um, what's called modeling or redox and water features. And that's how you can determine the water table. The water table fluctuates throughout the year. It's not a just definitive elevation. So I, I think I was trying to get an understanding of when the best time of year is to test and how that differs. You, know, you can do it. To December to March. Be, because you can determine it by looking at the soil profile, you can do it any time of the year. It, it would be higher in the spring. It would be more obvious in terms of you would notice uh, brown water seeping into the pool, or there would be water at the bottom of the pool. You can do it any time of the year. And when we did the decals, just for your information, we did it this past fall. And I don't know if you recall, we had a very wet fall. We had a ton of rain in October. So the groundwater conditions were at least normal, if not at large normal during the year. Any other comments? Sir? Jay Chantel at 66 West Brock Road. Question is, um, so hypothetically, um, the applicant's plan is approved, and um, we find out after all, all said and done that they're wrong, and Chuck's sort of model or demonstration is right, and I now have a pool or pond in my backyard. Uh, what sort of recourse do I have? Is it the commission's town responsibility? Am I going? after the applicant or am I thinking legal terms what is my sort of recourse for this because I just I, not knowing what obviously Chuck knows or what these engineers know your town knows I'm extremely worried just looking at that property I don't have any issues with my basement at the moment but you know if that were to be the case um, or, or a pond in my backyard killing my property value. I'll need to talk to So that's a great question. Um, so in this town, stormwater is viewed by the engineering department, and you could uh, go to the engineering department or ask the engineering department that exact same question. Um, Mr. Uh, let me see if I get this right. Castelluccio also spoke with the engineering department, and they put a memo together. I'm not sure he helped them with every item on that memo, but he did talk to them before the memo was put together. So, and I did talk to the engineers um, yesterday, and I think we're waiting for a response, right? You have that letter, and they'll uh, respond to that, and then the engineering department will look at it again. But stormwater is reviewed by the engineering department. It's a great question for them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Chuck, that, that this was going to be one of my questions, but engineering is starting to look at both this drainage report and the, the site plans and, and all that. They are. We haven't heard from them yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Holly Mastronati, 144 Avenue Street. When were your tests done? Was it in August or? No, we delineated the wetland in August. Yeah. And we did the deep holes in October and November. October? Yeah. October. And we were above normal for April. It was a weird fall. It was October a wet. It was a wet. It was a, wasn't it a wet summer? Yeah. yeah. Wet fall. Too. Okay. <coughs> One other thought is that maybe we should investigate that culvert. I wonder if it's blocked at that either end. I mean, I've yeah. a lot of flooding issues and problems. 
maybe the town could investigate the culvert to see if it's compromised at all? Chuck, how, how would... That was brought up. That was on their list, yeah. Yeah. They came out and pointed it out. I'm sorry? They, they came out and, and maintained it. Okay, so it is not blocked it's not up? It's not blocked. When's, okay. uh, when was the last time they did that? It was this winter. They, they actually came out. It was either fall or winter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, there you go. Thank you. Mr. Castellucci. Okay. <coughs> Do I hear a motion to continue? Well, we need what? a motion to uh, get some quote, uh, get some bids for a third party review. I make a motion for Chuck to start put together an RFP for third party review. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> motion to continue. And do we have so a before I do that, in the meantime, is there does the applicant want to have a plan for the commission to go out with more rain and just get these locations? I mean, understanding that we're still going to get the third party review in motion, do you, do you think it's going to help or? Um, we are more than open to. Unfortunately, I couldn't make the last night visit you folks attended. So honestly, if you call me on a Monday, let me know a day that works. If the weather's cooperating, we can certainly shuffle our schedule and okay. accommodate the commission. It's not a problem. Okay. Make a motion to continue. Second. All those in favor? Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Big comments. I should not see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I have to get new cheaters. Oh, yeah. I was like, what do you need this? I used to put them in my boot bag. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Oh, cute. <laughs> 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 you put it on the table. What's that? I'll be back to wait. Okay. Do I have a motion to... Almost no. Chuck, we don't have Azalea Circle, right? Azalea Circle has continued. Do we hear a motion to continue Azalea Circle? I move we continue Azalea Circle. To the next, yes. to the 20th. 27th. 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 Okay. Make a motion to continue because the other circle is at the 27th. Okay. So moved? Moved. Okay. That's Second. Good. Second. Yeah, All those in favor? Do you know what we said? I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I seconded twice by accident. All right. Okay. Um, it's just, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, I don't high know, school. but there's a... They're the high school tonight? I think they're at the high school. I think that's uh, what I'm going to Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Drive all over town. Let us know. Hold on a second. It's a, it's a joint committee of uh, selectmen and the school committee, right? They're voting I on... Think, uh, yes. The temporary... Budget? No, the oh, Memorial yeah. High. Of, and it was also last night's meeting that was called... Yeah. 62 yeah. Oakland Road at Memorial High. But it's at the high school. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, it's past 720, but we have a notice of intent 270-0713-44 Roma Lane, map 50, lot 36. <coughs> okay. You're on. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. So, uh, 
Matt Carroll, Susie Carroll, uh, residents for 44 Rome Lane. Um, our attorney, uh, Jim McGrail, um, will not be here this evening, but uh, we're looking forward to uh, opening up the floor and discuss uh, where we are at uh, this point. Um, certainly uh, the understatement of the, uh, the night that uh, everybody has walked our property uh, quite a bit, and hopefully it's an opportunity to get a better understanding. Uh, we weren't available at the site walk before the uh, 9th of uh, uh, January meeting, as well as a couple weeks ago, um, which unfortunately uh, we weren't available then. Probably would have uh, helped alleviate some of the uh, concerns and dialogue from the last two uh, meetings. Uh, but regardless, uh, it's our hopes that the um, that the proposed line um, work area that we're, um, we wanted to propose has been staked out within the yard, as well as the recommendation of the commission in the last meeting on the 23rd um, to kind of represent uh, the gap of kind of where we are today and uh, in the spirit of uh, hoping to come to a resolution independent of the fact that we won't have a delineated weapon line um, of having that discussion in the hearing of the this point. I did make it there today. Oh, awesome. Great. I was not able to. I'm sorry. I drove out there. <coughs> so I was out at the site. It was just Tuesday. I and was I was too. with Dave and, and Becky. And we uh, met, met uh, Susie Carroll. And, uh, and we went over the line. But um, just generally knew where things were. But we, we did. You do have a plan. Um, and this is this is the plan, and the red line represents the proposed, the, the proposed the, yeah, um, the Carroll's line. And at the last meeting on the ninth, uh, is it the ninth? The twenty-third. Sorry, thank you. The, the twenty-third, we uh, the commission came up at the meeting. Uh, this this yellow line. Is it yellow? Orange. Orange -ish yellow line. And we went out and we saw that staked in the field. Um, so it it looks to me that the orange line saves a couple of trees, but there was a little bit of discussion back and forth um, about you know some high ground and some some. Uh, where, where an area was that was known to be uh, more of a wet area or more of a wetland area based on some uh, some development maps of the entire area. So we have this line here and we have the other line which was kind of the original wetland line which is further back um, further back behind their property. So gets along with this plan there's a couple of trees outside of the property line that were flagged to come down um, almost directly in back of the house were there three I don't think I they're can't on this remember. there were four trees okay so I know Carl you got to the property and anybody have anything to say I think I think it's it's still that the, <laughs> the distance between these two lines is, is could be, you know, even though it's not really great, it, could, it seems to be that it is. It seems to have a lot of pressure associated with it. But, um, and again, we're not representing these lines on uh, a delineated wetland line. We're just trying to come to a conclusion to push things forward without, you know, causing uh, more fees, and, and I think we all know the site well enough to, to be able to proceed this way. With that, I'll turn it over to Becky, who has never had a shortage of words. Oh, no, I do. I'm not a talker. Um, we, we did meet up, and, and, and this is Carol, Susie Carol, who would prefer this line. No, you, you, you would, but, um, and then Dave was into the discussion, and actually, uh, I, I think one, I really want to apologize to you, because I was pretty snappish, but um, when we were out and, out and we're not in a public meeting, we have to watch what we say, you know, and um, 
and we were, you know, kind of redrawing this whole line out there when we were meeting. At the, at the sidewalk, and I misunderstood what Dave had thought about the line previously. So there was there's a lot of miscommunication, and I'm not I don't want to misrepresent what David. I thought he had talked about taking it from here over there. Excuse me, but he didn't. He wasn't. But I want to have you, Dave, tell them what you had thought about. Um, I think well, you need to go up of, and, and show yeah, it. One of the wild cards with this is the tree. Um, the tree that's a fork tree that's oh, the, the in between. Uh, right here. I don't have a picture of it. Between the two. So, <coughs> in, in that one, yeah. That tree that's right there. Yeah, it's just split from a technical okay, point of view. Um, I think that's right here. That's the yellow line. Yes, we that's using, it. Yeah, because I didn't the, see that. I thought to the roadway is one of the is one of the, the points. Oh, yeah, to bring on this. And yeah, it's when I was out there before, she um, wants there was a stake here, was a stake here, a stake here, and the stake well maybe here and here. Probably. And one of the no. things that I had said before, no. there was a stake that was here and another stake here, right? I had thought of going in between this one and this one, kind of in the center here, and two stakes out this way. And whether it falls in here somewhere or in where this orange line was, my thought was to take and, and at this second stick that's here, was to start the arc drawing that way and bring yeah. it back to this tree that's going to stay. There's a couple of uh, trees up here that are going to come down and bring it somewhere in here where the bottom of the wall would fall to maintain the base of this tree and the, the call of this tree. Um, and Could you draw that, Dave? Sorry, because I can, sure. just can't see behind. So, so one of the things is, is that <laughs> just from looking from a, a technical drawing standpoint, if you take a tangent point along the road here, that, that comes this way, and then come in a, a 90 degree angle from this tangent point, there's a tree that's back here somewhere, and take from that tangent point and draw it up in here, and then take and come along somewhere here where that second post is, and then swing an arc that comes from here, and then goes back over this way. That was my, I don't have many bullets on that one, but uh, can people see that? Yes, I can see it. So Dave, you're essentially saying a line between the two. Correct, <laughs> yeah. But you'd have to take the tree out in order to do that. And that was a wild card. Uh, well, some trees have been saved. Right. But there's a there's this, this orange line here is basically where the tree line is now. So this kind of is about six or seven feet out by itself. And this is a tree trunk. A fork tree, which those are never my favorite anyway. Um, right. So, I mean, I, I'm only of one, but this this was the point to keep away from this area because uh, this was the, the area, I think, that was in contention. And I was saying to use that there's a, there's a, 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 there's a, a state, uh, there's not a layer, but that's right. That is healthy. That's not going to write. I think you just turn the red one the other way, put the door, not the other. Call that tree. How tall is it? Oh, 50 feet. 50 feet. At least. I mean, it's okay, a pretty so mature. Okay. Okay. <coughs> just to represent where the corner is, there's a second stake out that way. It's not. And that would be where I would stick and take and start the, the, the arc heading back towards this tree that's here on the stone wall and that the, the wall would die somewhere here maintaining the, the lower collar of that tree so that that tree wouldn't die when the wall went in there. Can I hit this other that been there? And what have you been doing with those? Because it, it drops out quite a bit. That was my thought anyway. They won't, they won't agree with that. Oh. But you can ask it. Okay, thanks Who, Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> But the other thing is too is that I, one of the things that also became evident to me when I was speaking out on the site was the fact that there's going to be a boulder wall here, and the wall was not going to be 
like a perpendicular boulder wall which is going to be sloped um, sloped up, up the end. so the, the wall was actually going to be, take up a fair amount of that room anyway so yeah so you make sure you understand that when we say hey this is the line we we're going to decide on their building in the direction of their house right. everything in the direction of their house is going to get you know and, and that would be and then the opposite direction uh, it can be, you know, natural vegetation. They can consider plants, but not. It's not a this is do not disturb wall. zone. It's just not a. It's a. It's a natural right. zone of vegetation so right. to walk through. So yeah. I, I just did. The, the only thing I wanted to point out is like I was going to say this is a hybrid. So I guess I'm next. Yeah. Um, and these lines represent something. We didn't really decide, and I think that's why this line goes no. kind of follows that. The dotted line? <coughs> yeah, yeah 25, so 25, 35, 35. Zone. 35. But it, okay. based here, we didn't agree on that. But, you know, we, there's a lot on here we didn't agree. It's basically our knowledge. So, so well, do wait, you, just so I understand, yeah. isn't that the line that the Carols presented in the last meeting? I mean, yeah, I can't remember the name of those guys. But, but yeah, but so on their last. Uh, I don't think the question has ever been whether we disagree with that, I mean, that line at its spot, but it's not going to be further away from that, right? Oh, we definitely disagreed with the line back here that was brought in. It, there, here. but up what, yeah. closer towards the house, we kind of agreed, you know, as you're right. exactly. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, parts agreed. This area seemed to be the area of... I guess, I guess what I'm asking you is, you're saying we moved this in because we... We don't think that you know, we're trying to avoid going inside this line by any means necessary. It's certainly not. So I'm not getting your point. What? So I'm, I'm saying there's an area here that we're trying to protect. Okay. And you know a straight line. You know it might work, but you know I would say if this if Dave's tree wasn't right there. But if it was over here, would his line go to it over there? I mean, I don't understand the tree part, but but because we said you want to you know, say that you want to say the tree. That's shot, why roaring, you know, list goes this way and that way. What is out <coughs> there that? And I got right here. You said this is where the old growth trees are, and these yeah. where the saplings are. Here. So from up to there, I'm, I understand it, but from here to here, except for you had a landing pad, yeah. what, what was? The what about just taking from where that dotted line is, and then joining that to the second, second dot that I have? Yeah, right. So, the so right, come the down. No, yeah. to the right. Go to the right. Yeah. Down to the left on the dotted line, the 35. 35 line. Yeah. Foot. Keep yep. coming down. down. Keep coming yep. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep coming down the line. Yeah. Yep, right there. Join. Line. Go from there and just join. Join that with an arc line to the second dot. What? Yes. Yep. That's a. That's a there you go. Is this part of it here? No, we, I was just saying. No, that I, yeah, I, I was, was, was going to say to follow it. the dog. It's, it's not worth us keep on talking about. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, please. <laughs> yeah. So we have. I went up to town, town hall um, last week or two weeks. I don't even know how many, what day it was, but um, just to talk with Chuck to see um, some things that had been referenced in meetings, just so I could wrap my head around what you had brought up. Um, and so I had, I've been talking about this with Chuck and talking about this with Matt. And Matt and I came up with something that we thought maybe was a good compromise that. Um, yeah, so based on what we've talked about collectively over the years, based on what we've talked about at the ninth meeting, the 23rd meeting, and the concern with that, um, that, that area, uh, which has always been a point of contention. We kind of we kind of knew um, that the orange line that uh, we had staked out um, wasn't going to be satisfy um, everybody's concerns. So we proactively kind of uh, made a another line. This one's blue, and um, I don't have the uh, I don't have the, uh, the PDF uh, to send a check electronically, but I can send it to you uh, tomorrow because I forgot the thumb drive. And this so if I, can I draw them there? Sure. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll try. I'll oh yeah, try just oh, that's kind of like put your initials. <laughs> so that's that's what Dave's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. This is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is what our yeah. new 
proposal was. I took into account Dave's recommendation yep. or suggestion or concerns yep. to go to this. This yep. is the corner stake. Go to two, this. Two stake. in. Two yep. in. So not this, not this. Yep. Two in. Wherever that is, it's right. This yep. is that tree. It's a little bit beyond that tree. Yep. And then That's go back up to. Point. Yep. Then we hit. Man, am I right? We hit this yep. point here. Yep. And which again was based off of the well line that we were right. we're not uh, in agreement with that. That's what we use. But right. that's what we yep. use because at the very minimum, then we're protecting what back we're 35 feet away from what right. Foxbow said and all that. That saves this tree. That saves the other tree that's there. And we go this way, like this, along that. We hit the, the widest point here, yep. and we go here. Those trees stay. This is the tree that we really would like to ask to take down. Yep. We'll take all other trees off of the um, table for discussion. We'll keep them. Um, we well, just would like to take that one tree because yeah. this one tree allows us. I measured, and again, I'm not an engineer or anything, but at this point, it was a 10 feet differ differential. Back yeah. down, it was like a 14 feet differential. To allow us to take that tree down allows us to go and drop our elevation by three at a almost, you know, over three feet by yeah. your three to one ratio. Gives us a little bit more of a what we work with so that our wall doesn't have to be quite as high, our grade can be um, more gradual, and it gives our kids 10 more feet to play. Well, yeah, no, that, was, that was my uh, point of uh, taking that off because it's it's that balloon that you have there, I didn't see a reason. No, they took that out. Like that 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 took, they took oh, that out. That's oh, why I said to draw the arc <laughs> coming up. But we had, when, when I think we discussed the last time that that the fork tree that's to the right of the tree that we wanted you to save back wall. I think we had discussed I, that I, before I, that we were I okay with you taking that out. Let's do it. It's okay. The two smaller trees that's supposed to be we were okay with you taking that out. That was. But we wanted to nice keep the big one but, that was um, to the left. I'm fine. That would be great for us. Yes. 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 Correct. Yeah. Yes. Forested vegetated. Yes. Because I, I don't have any issues with the blue line. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of liking the blue line. <laughs> Sorry. I think, it's a, I think it's I think it's you know, and, we've and come I, a long way. I think it's a good compromise. Know, I'm, yeah. I'm okay with taking that tree out. I, yeah. I, you know, I just yeah. we've, we've been I able to too. save other things. I, yeah, I'm pretty actually pretty happy with this. And the other thing is that doesn't mean that you can't on the outside of that blue line, you know, put some replacement trees in there as well. Well, and that was what was so helpful when I went up and spoke with Chuck. <laughs> was there for over an hour, I think. My poor daughter was there. Um, and um, we ended up talking for a lot longer, I think, than both of us expected. But it was very helpful because not knowing, like you all know this backwards and frontwards, and we're becoming experts, but we still don't know. Um, so I had thought all along, you know, like I don't tell, I tell the kids don't go in that area and stuff. And Chuck was like, no, you can go in that area and you can plant things in that area as long as they're native. Native. And right. we didn't, yeah. I didn't realize that. We had never really, we thought that it was just going to be a no man's land. It's kind of been for the past six years. So that's very encouraging to hear all of that. And, and I appreciate that meeting with you. It was, um, I think it was educational for me to say So that. does this yeah. give you, this blue line, does this give you starting point with, so that now you can go out and secure an engineer drawing for what you want to do. An engineer, it, engineer it does plan. for you folks. Um, yeah. we, you know, we've already spoken with uh, Donahue who had done the original water plan. Spoken to him about uh, the concerns from the ninth uh, meeting and wanted to have the elevations slotted down so that we have something to give to our contract. <coughs> so uh, that's a pretty quick turnaround. We should be able to hopefully add that if we can come to an agreement on this in principle tonight. To I only have one thing that, that, and I've said this before, but and so I'm, I'm sure you're going to agree. I just want this line to connect with this buffer strip. Yes. That's all. Yeah, not to go to the, yes, it's going to go through, like, it's three feet. I go through, yeah. It's in our um, so original thing. You have this plan, which is which is great. So if we had some sort of something like that, that would be, that would be great. I'm not, that's probably more than three feet, but if you're still planning to do that, that's that's pretty nice. <coughs> you're not doing that wall that goes uh, parallel to to your um, house. Uh, well, essentially, it was this right here. Yeah, you're not doing that, right? No. 
No, that's you do, you, so you're doing a wall. We're going to get a new plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to get a new plan. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't. I don't know how to lock this down, and because it's not really. Yeah, we're not really. Yeah. Open. I don't think we need a motion, but so there might be a little bit of more. You know, hey, that's not what we said. But I like the blue line. I like yep. that everyone's finally agreed on it. I, I think we know it pretty well. Yeah. But I think, guys, between, I think between that dotted line that's on your plan and your second state that's that's on your orange. Well, there's a tree right back. there. She kind yeah, of branched it. It's a few feet off right. of the tree. Yeah. Um, so the second stick in from that corner <coughs> and then that dotted line, if you just draw your line from there and then, you know, keep it inside of that, that big tree far enough <coughs> there when you build your stone wall that it doesn't encroach on the, the, the uh, column at the bottom of that tree. I think you're good. And, and as far as, just so that we're very clear on, we are okay to take that tree down that I circled there. Yes. yes. And the ones in the back that, I, I mean, we're fine with, with keeping uh, it, I guess. But you just have to, you have to get a letter from you. Hold on a second. Yeah. No, we're only approving the line tonight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll approve the trees later. I think they are coming down, but that's not. We don't even have a permit at this moment. Oh no, so we're you, not yeah. taking a tree down today. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, so that we can, so that we can plan, like. Oh. The whole point of pushing the line is to present the project with that line on it, with the trees coming down, and show us what it's going to look like when we're done with, with, with topography. To, yeah, with. And, contours and, yeah because we we <coughs> actually will ask you to, you're going to do a lot of planting we actually ask for each tree that comes down we like to have either two bushes or one tree okay. uh, it's in our tree policy and that's why i don't want you to get that because we're going to we're going to tell you what we want to replace those trees with okay so so a map like this that shows this line is what you want with the topography on it well, it's going to be an engineered plan that's going to show you your, your gradient lines. Half, half. So it's going to show you wall, okay. then it's going to show you the gradient lines of where your fill is going to go. You finish grades. Yes. Okay. A map of this detail. Right. Is what, this is the detail, I think, for right? grade. An engineered drawing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so this would be one page, and there would be probably two artists. I mean, existing, proposed. Okay. You, you know the trees no. that are going to come no. down. It's usually a couple, it's a couple pages. Sure. Um, you need to show the trees on. The I think Jim might know what we're talking about, or you can give me a call, or even your survey person would know what we're talking about, oh. or he could give me a call. No, also. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So we put this in order. We'll get stuck to this point. Um, we actually thought going in that uh, the proposal of the pool was going to be the uh, biggest obstacle. Up to this point, it hasn't been much of the conversation. For Susie and I and our family, the biggest win kind of coming out of this um, is that side area right here. Would the recommendation be to take um, the uh, proposal for the pool off of the next uh, project? No, you no. want to put it no. all in because it's within 100 up. feet of the jurisdiction. Although we really so anything like you do. These periodic yeah. updates with your family. <laughs> <laughs> put it, please, just put everything you ever want to do. Put what you want to do on it. On the and, uh, and if we. Yo, I think at this point we have a pretty good understanding yeah. of what you're looking to do, and you've gotten a feel for what you you're going to hear from us. Three years. Um, but uh, you put on, you want to put on everything that you want to do. Please. So, are there any recommendations um, for that behind the house area uh, that <coughs> seem to be aligned with of the wetland line, and using that as the uh, uh, point of um, demarcation? Are there any recommendations to enhance the next round or proposal to, uh, that you folks would be uh, looking for? In, on top of obviously the gradient lines and topography by the engineer. I, I think what you already proposed is fine for the between your house and the back the wall. Pool, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, we're going to go with these wetland lines. Isn't that? Yeah. I'm hearing this yeah. the Oxbow lines. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think what makes it people see the pool and they see the vegetation you have around it and, and that's the concept that we're saying yes <coughs> not not just hey there's a pool but a hardscape here and you have vegetation all around it here and I know this is going away so when it comes back in it's got to look like that nice nice really. buffer between the pool yeah. and, and what's behind the vegetation is and part that's of what we're saying put, yes to you know either your bushes uh, or or a tree replacement for the tree that you're taking down 
was five, right? Uh, no. Typically, we get some sort of table, too, that says what you should, type of... You should hire, if you can, you should hire a wetland consultant that... A wetland consultant? Well, you should hire somebody that... We have a lot of people come through that know the process, and it's just, we're just explaining every little piece and it would be easier for someone who somebody knows. to help you yeah I mean Donahue I think they're up in Boxford Boxford yeah I think, I think well, are they what are they contractors are they no 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 they're a survey company yeah. well no he's he, they're big up there I mean I just haven't seen him too much here do they have a wetlands scientist they on this did track? everything with the Boxford Conservation Office for but sure so they saying, know how to do it you're saying you would not understand how to do it he would. Yeah. He, he should run, yeah. they should run the project or someone else who, you know, in, understands what what the notice of intent is and, and, to, and to put it together. So, that's... Um, so, does it need to be a new notice of intent or is it... Yeah, you'll be doing a new notice of intent for this work. So... New so application. New application, a new... Yeah, file because I, I don't think that. there currently really is a... Yes, yeah, so there's nothing active still. Because it expired? It, well, it was withdrawn. It was withdrawn. One was withdrawn, and the other one was... This, this was never officially filed. We've, we've been having... And the other one was denied. What did we file, what did we file when we had to have the with the abutters? Just like, with Oxbow? No, this, like, Oxbow. current, like, for right now. Did what you is, have an, an, anything go out to the abutters for this? Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah no, actually, I think we can buy it since you got a certified letter. <coughs> It was a notice of intent. It has so many. It was a notice of intent. Yeah. Granted, this, to take away those handwritten lines, this is what was presented in our notice of intent that we filed in December for our yeah. So it would just be an amendment to that notice of intent? No, it wasn't. It, so this is still ongoing. So at this point, I guess what we're asking for is plans to move forward under this notice of intent. So, so, but so there is a notice of intent. I, yeah. I guess for some reason I was under the impression, and, and I think that's what you heard from this commission, that this, this was just a yeah. discussion without a notice of intent. It would be an amendment under your current notice of intent. Okay. Okay. Not an amendment. Well, new plans under the current notice of intent. Yeah. The current permit. I think what was confusing is that Mr. McGregor <coughs> came in and, and talked generally and then he kept going back and forth with the line. And That's not usually how we do a notice of intent. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I think he came so. and talked and then we did file and then he came back and talked. Right. And then right. we right. right. down. Right. So it's so. been. Yeah. So it's, it's been a long, it's, a, it's been a process. Okay. Uh, um, but yeah, I think I think we're there. So, so I move we continue the notice of intent. The next meeting. Second. Uh, um, uh, are you going to have time? enough time to put this together? Well, I think we're going to hit the ground running tomorrow, um, and there'll be communication with Chuck. And if we feel as though we won't start it long, if we feel as though we can't turn it around in time and make sure that we're full in what we're right, and just you can call continue. us up, we can just call can Chuck, request and the continuation. Just yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I don't want to waste uh, anybody else's time if we don't have it. Right. So what yeah. We we have, uh, and we don't want you coming in every. Two weeks, you know, yeah. if you don't have to. Right. Yeah. Right. But if there is a chance that we could, we would appreciate. It. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. automatically on the agenda for for two weeks from now. So do I hear a motion? We'll just continue it again. No. With a Make a motion to continue. Uh, what is in Hawaii? What's it? Do we have a number? Uh, it's 270-0713. 0713. She said to February 27th. A second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Oh. I forgot the flowers. Don't forget about your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, no, no problem. Down with that. Some, uh, so, I, yeah, we're really going to have to work at night. Like, so, for most of the sites have been uh, just centrally located. And when Roma Lane, it's like 24 minutes. I'm like, what? Where are we going? North Ray? Right? Uh, <laughs> and I had to pick up my daughter. And
Okay. Okay. Hello. You're next. How you doing? No, we're not. I'm sorry. Not yet. We have um, orders of conditions under all new business. Um, did anybody read the order of conditions for 1503? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any comments? Do I hear a motion? Uh, yes, motion to uh, to issue. We issue one tonight, Chuck. Or approve. We are issuing 1503 tonight or deny 1503 tonight. Okay. So one of the uh, so hold on. Is so I did the bond is twenty thousand? For each lot? Yeah, that's that's the only question I had. Was it each or both? Right, so Let's get any comments back from the commission. So please well, look these over. And definitely the next one too. So <coughs> yeah, I have the bond set at twenty thousand. That's high. Particularly well, for it was high, high Chuck. Well, the bond's just boilerplate. I throw that in there. I don't. Hoping I, that we look at it. And, and he makes a nice, ridiculous number so that we draw attention to it. Which, to, which nobody tried. paid attention to. It. Well, I mean, they're installing septic systems, right? Yeah. Installing new roads. Septic systems are outside. It's not new roads, right? The septic systems. It's, so it's a driveway. I'm just talking about the amount of excavation. And so I think. Ten for both five five. Yeah, I think this is five. Yeah, five. Okay. All right. Just trying to move it along. I'll just make that change. Okay. Do I hear a motion? Yeah. Uh, 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 issue NOI two seventy dash zero seven zero five fifteen zero three Main Street Lot A Map sixty Lot eleven Castellano. Order of conditions. Thank you. What did I say? No, it's with it. Oh, it's okay. Sorry. I'll, I'll second. second. All those in favor? Okay. Dave? I'll make a motion to uh, issue order of conditions for NOI 270 0704, 1503 Main Street, Lot B, 60, Lot 12, Castellano. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Uh, yeah, well, we got the order. Yeah. I, I looked at it. Okay. Wait, so um, you did send this to us I twice, right? I yeah. That's okay. I, couldn't I thought I did, but then I couldn't find it. Well, it doesn't hurt to send it twice. Is this your Wait, you sent it to us three times. Is it really? Yeah. 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 I write this. <laughs> I write. I write. Person. Yes. I said. All right. Draft fifteen oh three. O O C fifteen oh three. Fifteen oh three A B draft. It's okay. All right. Let me get those back. I just want to keep them all together. Like you and you today. We are. Yep. I'm just. That would probably be the next. The, the next thing. Can I Did sit we have down? anything that was outstanding? For the, no. No. Mm -mm. For the last meeting. Did you sign that? Oh, that's right. Pretty good job. They did a pretty good job. Uh, I, huh? Thanks. Are you I'm conflicted? Really <coughs> so why did I really have to pay attention to the other order of really conditions? Because I didn't have to. <laughs> okay. Do we have it? Did anybody look at the order conditions for like the evening? I did. Um, I gave you gotcha. my comments. Okay. Do I have a motion? Oh, wait a minute. Did, I, is I, it I, done? It is done. Okay. There's something I'd like to talk about. Okay. No. That's all I'm saying. Don't <laughs> no. jump ahead. I just want to, I was just trying to get, make sure these are set. And then on Lakeview and Eaton, one of the things that we talked about was that burn. And I wanted to make sure that 
the language in there that everyone reviewed, it says that we have sufficient um, firepower and authority to request more vegetation on that berm. And so that's the, that's the area I wanted to talk about. I know that Anika looked at it, and I don't know if the rest of you looked at it, but I do want to have your input and to know that you feel like that covers it. Remember what number that was, Chuck? I'm looking for it right now. Substantial include methods to protect trees and other Seven. I think seven's great. Okay. I just want to make sure I covered it. Thanks. Then we are good to go. Do we have a motion? A uh, motion to issue uh, order of conditions for notice of intent 270-0711 to 23 to 35 Lake Ulam in Eaton Street, map 17 yes. and 18, lot 131, 274, 275, 276, and 1 and 2. Federa Eaton Lakeview Development, LLC. Second. All those in favor? So, you issued? Yes. You issued with the... <clears throat> okay. Are we going to sign that? Oh, shit. <laughs> you guys did that. Unless, what did we sign? Did I miss it? <coughs> no? Okay. <clears throat> We have a on the agenda. We have a discussion at 107 Main Street. Patricia De Debabne. Uh, Debabne, yes. Debabne. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak to you. Um, do I just? I'm not sure really the process. Do I just? Well, let let me. You know. Um, we did have a site inspection. Maybe we'll talk about that before we start. Um, okay. Just so that you know that we do 
focus the attention on wetlands because that's we can't really and, and I've seen some of your discussions back and forth and as as much as I you know um, kind of side with you on certain things we can't really address those because we don't have any jurisdiction over parking and, and things oh like no that. I know that yeah, yeah. but um, we took um, Dave Chuck and I went out on Tuesday morning that was our first inspection um, and this was before the snow and the rain and and we walked we parked the car right in the back and we saw some uh, tree stumps one two three along the wooden the wooden fence and then we walked uh, there was a big black truck parked Mm -hmm. next to the dumpster dumpster there a big black truck and then there was a, a, a gravel apron back there and then we walked out back and we saw um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, a brush you know branches that had fallen over but else we also did see some um, chunks of cut wood back there so I suspect that those might have come from some of the trees and then there right at that corner there was a large tree that had been cut down but we did see in the interior of that stump that there was rot yeah and carpet ants yeah. so that could have been um, you know a tree a danger tree that could have fallen over and you've got one in your backyard that's um Dave wants it because it has burls in it. Yeah, yeah I actually that. didn't think that was that fresh. Right. What? Yeah, okay, right. That is, isn't that newly cut? It, it, that one I now? mean, it looks... You didn't really think it was new? It's probably a couple of months yeah. that it's been cut. Well, recently, yeah. yeah really? I mean, yeah. I saw... I mean, around the other three, there's saw, there's, like, there's saw saw saws, yeah. So, I mean, right. those are very clearly fresh yeah. cut. Right. This one, to me, by the center, you know, that looks to me like it's was cut a while ago, no? I mean... That might have been cut back when the... When the For it to be eaten out the, uh, they did the, the sun was out and it was hot. You know, so... It went through another season. But anyways, it, um, we did see um, a lot of evidence of... Um, restaurant refuse as you know like boxes and some cups yeah. and things like that mm -hmm. not good um stewardship i think in back there yes um we did um i walked back further and there is a wetland um not on your property but right straight back of the dumpster mm -hmm. um and then we saw <coughs> <clears throat> in your next door neighbor there's actually a stream a little stream then it goes into a culvert beneath it, underneath your property mm -hmm. and then it's it I, I there was a uh, catch basin uh, in there uh, next to the wooden fence uh, also took a look at you know we were thinking that I think one of your complaints has been that <clears throat> there's a lot of water running off of you know uh, route 28 and maybe the property next door if you're looking back to the right mm -hmm. um, but I walked I, I did see that there were drains uh, um, storm drains in that parking lot area and then there was one towards the um, the low point in the parking lot area and you can see it sloped down but there is a catch basin right in front of the dumpster and then I actually went and looked over on the other side and in the middle there was also a catch basin so I suspect it goes out to the street drainage um, on the uh, what road is Hopkins Hopkins, Hopkins yeah. then into, into the main street drainage and then down to any any other observations Dave that I might have missed or Chuck no. Oh, oh, look at him. You already had. Yeah. There, uh, Chuck pointed out there is that low point um, <clears throat> in the corner of the fence. Mm -hmm. I did see a lot of leaves, but I didn't see a lot of water stained leaves. Um, and I would have thought, I, I don't know, I didn't walk on that because it's your private property, but I didn't see any ice. I don't know if you've gone back and, like, tamped it. What did you, what did you think? You were there at a different I, I time. Went, I went Monday. I drove by. Actually, uniquely enough, they were cutting trees at the muffler place across the street. Um, I think outside of our jurisdiction is my 
yet. Sorry, uh, what was that? They, they were cutting trees at the muffler place, I think on the other side of the Oh, Hopkins or, Street, yeah. Uh, Hopkins yeah. Street, yeah. yeah. Uh, there also is a, I don't know what the right uh, word is, but I think it's a drain that the town put into my yard many like years ago so uh, underground the, well you can see it from you can see it like when you're it's back toward the back fence yeah. and um you know the, so the water kind of um flows through in that yeah, pipe it, yeah it, it is it builds up and then that helps to alleviate some of it so mm -hmm. it's kind of always been a um a concern but did you also notice the the way that um they have pushed back the and cleared some area around the dumpster recently because that's what kind of at the area where the bushes became, were you know to. that's what sort of started okay. this whole process with in the, addition yeah. to the trees there. like they yeah. pushed it way back that's why don't you take a photo that's this area <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but f that's not even i have photos but that i took myself <laughs> that's not where i'm talking about so. but this the dumpster's here yeah the dumpster is uh, Becky, Dave, and then the dumpsters down here. Right, so this and is, they're kind of looking into that area. But it's not in the some. paved area; it's in the the graveled area, the, the actual well, gray gravel area. I, I don't know if I took very good photos, but I did take photos of like what did you do here? Um, the trees and stuff, but. I was talking more Jeff. like... I'm all set, man. I, I have a new helper. Like yeah. he's yeah. he's sure. kind of cleared this sort of area. You don't want to see? Not now, then it's snow, but like this is... I'm sorry. This is like where the dumpster is, and then <clears throat> this is behind the dumpster so that that fence is the back of my property and the neighbor's property. <coughs> and that's sort of what attracted us it to... It looks like the gravel area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the gravel, the gravel area. area. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's what it yeah, was. Okay. Yeah. And the dumpster's right oh, here. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. Right. That's the yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know the correct terminology. Uh, that's okay. Use that. That's okay. I wanted to make right sure that yeah. no. aware of that. Yeah. No. No. This mm. stuff... <gasps> see, there's a... And there's a, um, a, a little log and this yep. stuff. Yeah, I agree. I don't even know what yeah, and it, this is hiding it, a lot of it. No sure. Problem. Yeah, because they pushed the um, snow back yeah. there. But back in here, there's a yeah. lot of big it. branches and cut no. little stumps. Yeah. And that's not what that area is supposed to look like right now, mm. based on their standing mm -hmm. order of conditions. No. And they were <coughs> they were supposed to have uh, planted right some shrubs oh, yeah. right Mike they're all on their own huh? yeah Would they were suppo oh, they supposed to have planted some shrubs there yeah I remember yeah. from that from that from the plant yeah nope. oh. and anything. so when I I apologize I missed the last meeting which I was not aware of I think it was a miscommunication and I thought I was going to be called and I. And Mr. Is it Tyrone? Tyrone. Tyrone, I think, thought I was going to follow the agenda or whatever. And anyway, I missed it. But at that last meeting, you spoke of, um, I think, a notice of intent and a scientist coming out. And so can you just fill me in as to what transpired at that meeting? Because there aren't any minutes available. And... So I don't really know what took place at that. I wasn't at that meeting. We do okay. have this, actually. You can, you can watch it on TV. Yeah, you're alive. You can go on RCTV on if you okay. wanted to. Yeah. All right. Um, it's on RCTV. Okay. Right? You can actually go on the computer. And it's on YouTube. Okay. Too, as well. So TV. was he seeking to do... You, you had mentioned you thought he was 
seeking um, you know authority or whatever to do something about this. Sure. Do you want I, me to read the minutes? Yeah, why don't you read the minutes and then we'll okay. clarify. Okay. Uh, Mr. Palmer was present to give details on the work being done behind his restaurant. Mr. Cironi had sent a letter notifying him that a neighbor had complained about trees being cut down in the area between the restaurant's dumper, dumpster and the wetland. Mr. Cironi visited the site and noted that the trees, which were specifically <coughs> identified to remain, were still there. However, some shrubbery along the berm behind the dumpster was removed. Mr. Palmer noted that in the last couple of years he hired a landscaper to help maintain the property and that some branches were removed from some of the trees to stop the birds from getting into the stucco of the building. And some shrubs may have been removed as they were collecting litter and debris from neighbors and from Main Street. He's currently working with Jeffrey Brim of Meisner Brim Corporation who will prepare a report for the commission. Until he gets further guidance from the Planning Board Conservation, Mr. Palmer is stopping any further work behind his property. The erosion control is in the meantime. For erosion control in the meantime, he stated he will put hay bales along the perimeter behind the dumpster. So that's the status as of last meeting. So we did see the hay bales. Mm -hmm. So we are so alerted to the activities, and he's investigating <coughs> next steps of what he wants to do about it. He's going to come right. back to us. So he is. There was being work being performed that was likely within our jurisdiction. Correct. Um, it was not authorized. Yeah, and that hasn't been authorized. And so what we've done is we've asked, we've sent him a letter to ask him to halt, and he's agreed to not do any further work. Um, and so at this point, what he's in the process of doing with Jeffrey Brim of Myers Brim is putting plans together of what the proposal would be. At that time, he would submit a permit, presumably, to come back in and say, this is what I propose to do. Um, at that time, part of that discussion, I would expect, is to discuss what's happened out there recently, including the, the you know, I think at the last meeting he had indicated, oh, well, there was some trimming done, but you know, from our site, from my site visit, I can see that there were a couple trees taken mm -hmm. down. But hopefully that's all within the plans and, and, and indicated in what he's proposing to do. So I guess my concern, you know, which has kind of like the history of the, you know, tran what's transpired this far seems to be that Mr. Palmer decides to take it upon himself to do whatever he does. And then he seeks approval afterwards. And when he seeks approval and a plan is laid out to rectify whatever he did without authorization, it just gets pushed out and out and out and out like the one time from 2009 until well into 2011 you know and so it's just sort of like the trees are down he's cleared the area it took away some of the buffer in the back and on the side and now it's like you know while I appreciate the site visit you know the site visit's been done and it's sort of now oh well he'll come i've delayed it or postponed it until april and then april will roll around and it'll be like what plan is he putting into place and it just goes on and on you know i mean it really does and then it's always well, it's not the planting season, and so let's well, that's put you, it. You did hit on that. And that's, you know? I mean, he knows, or seemingly he should know the process involved, because we've been <coughs> here before, you know? And so I just think it's unfair to us that it, it just keeps happening, and it keeps getting stretched out and out, you know? You know, I don't so I, I have an update. I don't know if this makes, and, and again, he didn't give me a definite date, 
but um, Michael Palmer is supposed to come here tonight, and mm -hmm. then he said he couldn't make it at a family obligation. I just got an email from him before this meeting, and he said that Jeff Brim had finished up, and either Michael's gone or Jeff was gone, but they'll be connecting in the next couple of weeks to discuss what they've discovered out at the site and what they want to do about, you know, whatever, development or not development or whatever. But he did mention that he understood they had to come back from to the commission and that he would be in touch. And he also said the planning board, too. So, so what is it that he's trying to do out there? No, we're not going to know point, until yeah, we get the plan. We don't know. So doesn't he have to get permission to do it before? Like, I guess my con my concern is why is the ball in his court? Shouldn't he be going through the protocols that are in place so that people can oppose? Like, it's almost like it takes away your voice and your ability to oppose anything because it's all done by the time it gets here. And if, if we hadn't really gone, you know, come to town hall to bring it to your attention, that's exactly what would have happened again. You know? Unfortunately, <coughs> your case where you keep an eye out for neighborhood happenings and you see a violation happening and you bring it to the town's attention. Unfortunately, because we're a volunteer board, because, mm -hmm. um, you know, Chuck doesn't police the town all day. No, you I know, he's not that. on the yeah. beat policing mm -hmm. neighborhoods that we don't have active permits mm -hmm. going on. So unfortunately, that's the mechanism that we find out. Um, and in terms of, I mean, it's, I understand, I hear your disappointment in that process, and I appreciate that sentiment, um, but unfortunately that's just what we have in terms of finding out about violations. Sometimes I'm driving somewhere in town and I see something happening um, in a property that I happen to know if I've been attending all the meetings. I haven't missed a meeting. Something's happening, and I go, wait a minute. That's not supposed to be happening there. On that street, on that side of the street, without our approval, I wonder if Chuck knows about it. Maybe I'll place a call you know, to Chuck and say, I see something <coughs> happening here. It looks like trees are getting taken down. Did they clear that with you? Because certain activities he has authorization to clear, even if we're not in a meeting. So, you know, it's not a perfect process, um, and I'm grateful you've brought this up to the town hall. However, it's the process we have, and some applicants and some property owners um, do not cooperate after they've been caught with a violation. Some of them um, ignore us and move on. And just and it becomes a much bigger issue, but it but sounds like we have a cooperative somebody who knows they've there's been a violation, and now they need to take the steps to rectify that, and that's what the process they're in now. Well, I don't know. To me, I'm going to be honest and say he was aware that there was a problem. A, a letter went out. He received a certified letter. He could no easily look that. up when the meeting took place. He didn't pick up the letter until the day after the, 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 the request for him to come in. So it's always stretching it out, you know what I mean? And it, there's always a reason. And, you know, at some point when historically it keeps happening, he should be held accountable, you know? That's how I feel. It shouldn't just be, oh, well, now he's going to take the steps he needs to take to correct what he chose to do, and he knew he shouldn't. He's been through it before. If he's paying attention at all to what's going on with what the town requires, 
First of all, he should have known it, in my opinion, before he cut them down the last time. He certainly should be aware of it now that he's been through it once already. You know, that's just how I feel about it. And if there isn't something in place, even if it is a volunteer, which I totally appreciate your time and commitment to even being here, but you know, it, it, there'd be a process or a, some kind of, um, you know, he's held accountable for what he does and it's not another year before it gets corrected, you know? So the only thing I would say is, you know, I understand that you have a different history with the site than most of us do. You know, I've been on the commission for years. I, I, I haven't had to deal with this site before. <coughs> As I see it today with this incident, he is not, in, in my opinion, he has not gone to a point where he is extending time out. It, it's, in my opinion, it's been somewhat of a normal process. So we sent him a letter, we asked him to come in. He's indicated that he's going to prepare plans associated with what he wants to do. My opinion would be if, if it gets to some time, you know, a month from now, and we haven't heard from him, I would expect that we are going to, to question what's going on with this, where is it going, what's the time frame, so that we are keeping on, on top of what the plan is. But at this point, I don't see that he's extended it out, but this incident. But the, the last time that he was here, you didn't the ask what we his the plan was. Down. I mean, you were aware we there down. was a plan. There, so as far as we understand, there is no plan. I don't know. We don't have an official plan until he submits a permit. We can't review anything that he proposes to do until he submits the permit process. And that's what he's trying to go through at this point. So Has Chuck, he can I ask a question? The, two, the trees that you are clear in the pictures, there's stumps and trees and... Right today, do we understand that those were cut down appropriately, or were those cut down inappropriately? Inappropriate. Yeah. Inappropriate. 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 We know that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the letter we sent him was that an enforcement order? No. It and was, I mean, it was, it was just a notice. A, it was just a. I always start out with the same thing. Everyone gets a letter first. They don't respond, then you know I just tear it up. Yeah. There's a yeah. ladder and process. So. First thing is a letter. For, yeah. Very first thing, maybe a phone call, and I did try to call him, and I didn't have the right number, so he got the letter, and um, I knew that he had picked up the letter because I got the green card back. Gotcha. But I think I got it back just after the meeting, and. So, I think he was, I think at, this, he was this, at the last meeting. I mean, he was at the last meeting, and he did call me, and he said, "Look, I missed the meeting. I didn't get this until late, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go so to the next there, meeting." Are there two items? One are the trees that have been cut down inappropriately, and then are you, you're saying he's presenting something like, that he wants to show us. He made indication. So two he items? made indication that there may be additional work that he's proposing to do. That he's, part of that was the he's halting everything that's going on. Right. But there may be so he's so he's so he has asked for, he's cut down the trees inappropriately and he's was going to do something. The, 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 the no. clearing and the gravel was beyond what the plan was originally. Is that yeah. my understanding? Yes. The the gravel was beyond <coughs> where it was approved before on the plan. Right, and there were plantings supposedly yeah. in that area. Yeah. So those are things that um, were not part of the original notice of intent or were, were um, written into an order of conditions. So here's the gravel area. Here's the two trees. This tree is gone. Yeah. This tree still remains. <coughs> Here is the granite curbing with the gravel area that we see in some of the pictures I have. And I would tell you that tree exists, or, or one of these trees around here. There's one in here, and there's one over here that's existing. Maybe it's this one. But these are gone. And there were other trees. And there are three along the fence line here. But I'm sorry, were those existing trees, or were those planted? Chuck? And three along here? Yeah, there were three gone along there. I'm, was that in our jurisdiction? Those three? I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a okay, between a fence and curbing in a, in a jolly. It seems the like it would well, be I, hard to me. That's on her property. I believe there is in some piece that, of correspondence that that is, was to be a buffer zone. 
and other trees were cut down from the buffer zone before. <coughs> so I mean, you know, if a few more times there won't be a buffer zone, you know? Here's, here's a picture of that area. Um, Did this get a certificate of compliance? Here it is right here. Chuck, as far as you know? He's done. He's done that original project. He's done. We issued a certificate of compliance somewhere in 2011 or 12. No, oh, so then there should have been a new notice of intent. There's, there's no, so Mr. Palmer did some work and we went out there and we, we caught him, just like on Acadia right. Ave. Acadia Ave, we said, what are you going to do? And he said, well, he said basically the same thing, you know, I didn't know, blah, blah, blah. And we said to the guy on Acadia Ave, come up with a plan and when you're ready to work in the yard, come back and talk to the commission. Mr. Palmer, we said the same thing. He came in and we said, what are you doing out there? And he told us that he gets a lot of water from Main Street. It rushes through, it brings down trash. And over the years, he believes that his landscaper pulled out the trees. That's what he said. Um, he extended that area, also telling me that his landscaper did that, probably on the YouTube video. And so asked he's him to stop and put up hay bales, and at that point, he said that he might be anticipating additional work out there, and he wanted to hire a wetland scientist to to reevaluate the property. And I think when the commission heard that, we stopped our kind of formal process of of trying to put the site back together, and and said, well finish that part or that piece and then come back to us with a plan and the date I put down was was the last meeting of April and, and so it sounds like he's he going to accomplishes exactly what he's trying to do so his so he called didn't call me but he sent me an email tonight and I think it sounds like they're going to be ready sooner than, than April and it, it also sounds like he's unsure of if he can do anything out there, but there might be something he could do. And so, I'm sorry, you said something about the stucco, birds and the stucco? I didn't that. Say was that. in the notes oh, well, from the last meeting. Okay. So, is there evidence of that, or...? Do I have evidence of that? Well, I, did I don't. he provide, or was he asked to provide evidence of that before we go any further? I, I can go back to the meeting and take a look and see what, what the questioning was, but we don't typically do that. I mean, there is periodic branch trimming that we do allow. Well, to branch maintain trimming branch is trimming, so, down. so, you know, I'm, I'm, we see the evidence of what's been happening there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, it doesn't seem to me that um, you're interested in having patience in the process. And no, I'm not interested in having patience in the process because the last process took two. But, but Fran Fink was out there and she was so awesome. She, she was very invested in making sure that what should transpire transpired and it went on i mean you can look at the meeting minutes she would send co correspondence to him he wouldn't answer it she would have to send it again it went on and on literally for more than a year almost two years so that was, that was Sam's then. bistro well i know was that Sam's what, bistro why from would, why would, why would did he change hands think that yeah, it was going so to be Michael different Palmer, this he's time made a he's, restaurant he's come to the meeting out of, he's presented what was it, what five and ten or something and he's like indicated that. that he's going but to but he's not plan. presented what he's going to do to correct what the well, tree we situation is correct and we, don't, we haven't got it yet ma'am yeah we haven't i got understand it. but now we are waiting on a whole nother yes and that's yeah. our process and that's the process that's the timeline well, that process. seems unfair to the the person on the <coughs> other end when they're not touching your property how is that unfair to you because 
when trees are cut down that are in be on a property line that face the rear of a business, when the trees are down, instead of seeing the trees, you see the back of the business. And when it when it, when it was approved it's initially, it's a privacy, privacy screen <coughs> issue. Yeah, and well, when there's the trees right there on the picture. There's not very many of them. Right. Well, so that something, something was better than nothing. Yeah, you know, no, I agree. That's something you can bring up when he comes back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and we'll take a look and see what type of trees he's. What is he, what's he proposing to do, yeah. and where is he going to put those, and is that going to, you know, you can talk to him at that point. Might that be a screening towards your property, maybe not right along there, but, but Many certainly residents have done the that. back part of your property, you know, looking that way. And, and then also, like, what is the 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 clearing at the dumpster due to the water coming onto my property. Did it change the pitch of the land to have a negative impact on me? And, and if so, why should I have to wait for him to provide a scientist to see what he might propose to do? I mean, he should be accountable for what is already agreed to. And so those hay bales will prevent so, so he, he any right. loss of like getting it. Here's a piece of mine, but I feel for you. <laughs> yeah, so now you look out at hay bales. Well, there's a fence in the way, but they are well, there. Well, not from your windows. Within our authority, I don't know what we could do for you. This is his property. We're calling him on his responsibility to address the problems he has created and we are alerted to. Well, not really. You're giving him till April to... As, as to as anybody else that, that did this. And even, if, and even if we told him to do something now, the ground is frozen. Right, Okay. So exactly. Well, it's winter. Well, so, I mean, why I mean, did you choose your to cut the trees down right, right before winter? We, we clearly... Or right in winter. I mean, he went through this before, the exact same thing. The, the, the issue here is we have certain jurisdiction, and we're using our jurisdiction as best as possible to get to as quick a solution as we can get to. Right. And I, it's not a timeline, clearly, that you're happy with. And unfortunately, we can't do anything about well, that. Well, why couldn't because you we move don't up the April date? Why, why couldn't you ask him to give you a plan sooner? Than, I mean, April is a ways away. And April starts, then what happens is April, like, the process of the conversation of what is going to be done to rectify the problem begins in April. I think we've given them a reasonable time and a time that's consistent with other people that have made this type of, uh, have done something similar to this. This is this is a similar time frame. It's we, ha we are not giving him a special case or a special extension because it's him, because it's this property. It, to yeah. me, <clears throat> this is the same process that we've run when we've seen this before. Sure. And, and the same speed. He's already, I might add, that he's already uh, hired someone to do the wetland delineation, and there was evidence that that had already been completed. And I didn't expect this, but I did get that email saying that his consultant had finished up. Someone's going on vacation, but after that, they'll get back to me. So it's likely he can meet a tighter deadline on his own. And I'm encouraged to hear that I, I hear it moving. I mean, but that a, only 
only addresses, that doesn't address the trees that he took down. So what will happen in the process is we will not forget about those trees. He owes us all of those trees. He will, if he proposes a project and it meets our regulations, those trees will be added to it. If he can't propose a project, he will be re, he will be putting that area back together as it is on the original order of conditions and this site plan. We just gave him time because he thought he could make changes and there's no sense in doing the work twice. So those trees will be back, the trees he cut down will be replaced as our tree policy um, asks, which is a tree for a tree, or two shrubs for a tree, all native. Um, and Mr. Palmer, and maybe this wasn't discussed, but he wanted to, he wanted to investigate knew that if he could do some some additional work back there when he finds out whether he can or can't that's when he'll have to come back to the commission do you know what the work is no i don't he never why, why wouldn't you ask him what the work was why would he be granted a delay when you don't even know what the work is that he's proposing? The, the real answer to that question is because we are not emotionally invested in this project. And a lot of people come to us and they have different reasons for, for stopping at certain points or not making decisions or they just don't want us to know. But it's a it's an excellent right. question that if you are emotionally invested, you you say, oh no, I have to I have to know, and I understand that, but it doesn't happen here. Yeah, I don't understand, with all due respect, though, why why you would have to be emotionally invested if he has if he has not followed after already been having been through the process what your protocols are. It isn't like he's coming in now and asking you this. He's, he's, he's coming in now because he basically, if you want to call it in your words, was caught doing it. You know, it doesn't seem like he should be the one who's given the courtesies here. I don't think these are courtesies. Well, I see it as one. Because I'm sorry that you do, but I don't care. Oh, can feel I, like I ask you a question? Yeah. Can you just have patience in the process? Sure. And let the process move forward. Mm -hmm. And then if there's a problem in the future that you see as the process not going in a way or in a direction that you feel is equitable, then you can bring it up at that time. We have open meetings. He's going to come before us in an open meeting, and you will have an opportunity to speak at that time <coughs> if it's appropriate. And we'll see what he says. He's hired a, hired a professional wetland scientist that's going to come up with a plan. Um, to, to put what the, uh, a presentation to us as to what he would like to do. So I would just ask you to have patience in the process and let's we'll see what he comes up with and, and then we'll move forward from there. But we're just, we're just circling the drain now. We're not really getting anywhere. Yeah. And Patricia, you know, please go on our, our website to see when, Ooh. what our agendas are mm -hmm. so that, in, and because sometimes people say, oh, we're coming in and then, you know, at the, almost at the last minute, they cancel and I would encourage you, you know, maybe to call Chuck to make sure that they weren't canceled so, so that you don't have to come in and somebody's not here. Right. So when he actually puts something together, he's going to have to submit a permit. She's going to get You will be notified, be notified by um, official. certified mail anyways. Right. Well, for the no, first I'll, meeting. I'll call Patricia to make sure she knows because there's, there's many things that could happen. Yeah. He might just come back to us and say generally this is what I'm thinking about what do you guys think kind of a working session yep and you'd want to be here for that yeah so, so yeah. I'll make sure from from here on from this process that you're you're aware of what's if going he's going to be on the agenda that if he's going to be on the agenda coming and, and and again if he can't just I mean I guess he could just show up too but <coughs> Any, any we couldn't work do anything about forward, that. Would that be under an enforcement order or an NOI? We don't do those. And if they're going to, no, if they're going to put the time. place back together, it's just we just have them do it. He may actually file an RDA. He may a new RDA. I mean, you could do an enforcement order, and um, 
And you, you know, you have a lot of steps. I don't know what he's going to offer, but you could, you know, you, you could just request it. You could do an enforcement order. An enforcement order doesn't allow him to appeal any of this. An RDA isn't the greatest thing to use because it really says that no permits needed in the, how the RDA process works. So I'm thinking that, uh, or. or uh, and, and, and notice uh, for a new wetland delineation. That's what I'm thinking. Like red. Yeah, that's kind of. I think that's where he's going because they they sent somebody back out there. So what does but, that mean? Uh, they're looking back at um, where the wetland line is, but actually that wetland's close enough. It's in our jurisdiction. Mm. Well, I was looking at this. No, I was looking at this line. Where is it? Here and. Doesn't it look very similar? I mean, you get flag right. here. I mean, wasn't there one kind of like in this area here, like yep. there? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know if it's changed at all. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was something like way low on the site. You can see it. It's right there. So what right. does that mean? Well, you know, we're just like being investigators now. We're just kind of thinking that. What he might doesn't see well, yeah, we as play. far away as it could have been. So therefore, you take that line and you oh, you take that flag and then you add 35 feet and you know that there's not too much you can do within that first 35 feet. So he's had a wetland sign he, you know, wetland scientists go out there to look at where the wetland is to delineate redelineate that because it, it could have changed from 2000 the 2011 line or 2009 line is no longer valid. I don't know how um, many feet this is, though. This is... And based on that location, he can try to figure out what fits within the regulation for his property. Okay. Yeah, I'm certain he's planning something. Well, we'll know because of... <laughs> I mean, and it, I'm sure that that sounds probably about right what it is and so what then if that become if that line changes what happens what how does that change what we don't know we don't know I mean, we, we would have, have to look at that when, when he submits whatever he submits we have to within a certain amount of time we have to look at what he submits yeah and say yes or no so we don't know at this point I think that's what you get. And, they and would be so, part of any regardless, no regardless of what, of what, what and that's what, and that was um, what said, right? the scientist says or whatever, still, yes, will like that's, can the so change? That's, that's what, she, that's what yes. Chuck is done. Yeah, is, is he's other coming? Hoping, exactly hoping that there isn't a change, but, change, change, but, but I mean, does somebody here, look here, at the here. the? Pitch. I don't even know if that's the right word, but right. the way the that the water word. flows. Yeah. 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 Okay. But that's yeah. all supposition at this point. We really don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Until they we come back in with their project, then we'll know. But, but, but we you know, for the erosion good, controls to protect. Yeah. The good there. part is we have right. we have been out there yep. and we took a fresh eye okay. to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I appreciate that. I, I really do. I'm not like annoyed with you. I don't mean to sound annoyed with you, but it is it is a frustrating process. It, it's one thing if you feel like it was just an honest mistake that was made and an oversight. It's another when it seems somewhat intentional, you know? Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway, I don't think it was an honest mistake. I don't think. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. There's nothing we can do saying. about it. You know, we are stuck yeah. with our process. Right. So, I mean, but, at but the you end of the day, we want to be part of the process. Yeah, that's right. I mean, right. It, if, well, you know, one, yeah. one of the things that... Could ultimately, that, later, if there is continued inaction, we could later do 
an enforcement, enforcement order. Well, that's we why, can't take that's it why up I said the deadline. That's, that's, right. I mean, you have to defend what, what you're doing. Right. I mean, right. we can't just send them a ticket for 300 bucks. There's a process. Exactly. So first question would be, did you give him sufficient enough time to get his plans together and evaluate his site? And I think right. with that data at the end of April, it would yeah. have, that's yes. Yeah. Yeah. Next is, did you let him know? I mean, we would have to follow up with another right. letter certified, mm -hmm. and then an enforcement order. He ignores all that, and then you can find him. Right. So there's all those processes that we have to do. And after what's presented to you when he gets his plan together, do you as a commission have the right to dis to like deny that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it isn't just pending like what a scientist says to you that he hires. Well, you guys should explain a little bit more than just yeah. that. You can't just, I mean, you just no, can't. He, he, has to, he has to show what that scientist has to show and, and what he has to present is that he's meeting the wetland regulations and our town bylaws. And if he does, we and, can't say and, no. and if he right. does, we can't deny it. It's, it's his property. He's identifying to us that he's meeting the regulations. Uh, if we look at it and we feel we that review he, it. yes, if we review it technically, and and we feel that he has not met the regulations, that's when we we bring deny. Okay. That's when we, we have grounds it. to deny. Okay. And and these trees that are yeah. have, have been cut, the the work that's been done in the back will all be part of what we review as part. Okay. of Okay. One more thing. I know I'm taking a lot of your time. The last time the trees were replaced. <coughs> um, it wasn't stipulated like what size or what height or whatever they needed to be. Can we do that this we, time? We have a tree policy now that okay. stipulates those Oh, things. okay. Yeah. So if the right. trees will be uh, 12 to 15 foot tall and two and a half caliber, 12 okay. half inch caliber. All right. So it's a, about a $350 tree. Okay, because um, the the, they were very small last four time, so... Four to six for one, yeah. Okay, all right. So, it, yeah, so you are you would be a, a valuable abutter to be at the presentation, to, you know, to get your side of... This. Would that be before April or... Mm. We'll we'll let you know, but okay. the, I I would say if that, I was just talking about if he does file a permit, you'll be <coughs> notified. I'll make sure I call you anyways, or get a hold of you somehow, even though you're being notified. And or email. Yeah. If I'm not reachable or something, I would appreciate it very much. And that's what. Okay. Thank okay. you, Patricia. Okay. Thank, okay. thank you so much for your time. Thank I you. really appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Right. Uh, administrator's report. Is there a circle? I don't Nothing? know if this makes any sense to do. I was going to do this with everyone on Azalea here. I just said we went we went to the site. Um, I took Alex Rosicki, who's our town, one of the town engineers, and um, we did notice that for the most part, this, this site is, is pretty clean and free flowing. And it's just a plan, and I'll just use the plan. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Oh, no, you got this. You got new help. <laughs> yeah. Mike is my second up good or what? It's interesting. Maybe a little bit less. <coughs> This done in cream? It's just this fabulous new program we have. <laughs> yeah, it gives me a little more space. All right. So, so here's the here's the site. I'll just do it real quick. Uh, I'll have to move some of this a couple of times. But Can I erase that? Thank you. So here's the Zalia circle, and this doesn't even come out as good as. Anyways, here's the wetland. 
Arrow Circle, Joanna Drive, Azalea Circle. Here's the right here between, this is the site we're currently evaluating right in this area here. Um, so at the last meeting, I was under the impression everything flowed in this direction, but it does not. This is, this is actually, there's, there's no culvert between these two areas. Everything flows down here to this point, and everything's pretty free and open and into this drainage channel, which is also free and open. This pinch point right here has been identified by uh, me and Alex, and the DPW is going to uh, work on that. It is open, but it pinches down to about three feet. And it's flowing, and it's not obstructed, but it could do better. So at the end of the day, what ends up happening is when this fills up, it can only fill up. Check dam. Uh, oh, that's our check dam, dam to check this dam. spot. Yeah. So we, we wanted to work on that a little bit, and Alex is going to uh, get the DPW department to, to work for that. And I, you, I'm, I'm dragging it up to show you how free and clear this is all the way down. So this ends up meeting up with this stream here. So everything from up here where the blue line is, this drains all in this direction, down to this point here, free and clear, free and clear, and then it goes off to my right. Um, and at the top, we found one area up here where there's a bunch of trees that fell across. But outside of that, it was an open drain with no issues. Yeah? Is the work going to be under, co the, covered under the townwide permit? For, for these trees that span across here, what ends up happening is the DPW department goes out there and cuts it. they cut them either right here and here, yeah. and yeah. then just take them out from the stream, leaving yeah. the stream Open. free to move. So yeah. it's not uh, a need for a permit. But if they're embedded into the stream and they have to cause damage in the bank or the bed of the stream, land underwater, then I would issue an emergency permit for that work. Okay. So it's not really something that the commission is actively involved in this is more or less we need these areas not to back up right and what about the other area to the south that's also something that would be handled the same way emergency permit with an emergency permit and i'm talking issue. about because it sounds like you're talking for that area <coughs> you're talking about making that channel bigger hey chuck here's here's the channel right here that's one shot and here's another shot of it right here, coming this through. Is a fancy new yeah, I'm just, I'm just it's an ice skating pond. So um, I think this is looking up into the azalea circle, and this would be looking out into the stream, which is just beyond this area here, and it's you just have, blocked you have up. A three foot area. Uh, that's right that, here. That's that bit right there. Yeah. That's it. And here, <coughs> these are the trees right here. Hey Chuck, when they put that. What was it? Uh, a bridge up? Did they cut off the natural flow? No, it's it's. Or was it? Or was there a, a divide there? What's it's really interesting about flow. that? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. And and now it's going the other direction because it's forced to go the other direction when it fills the circle. Right. As long as we don't yeah, it looks a canal, like I'm happy. <laughs> so on. This is, I would say that the wetland is right here. That Dave's problem, I can't get this thing to work for me. I'm shocked that they have the culvert right there. The wetland's right there, right at the edge. But over here, I think the wetland's like out in this direction. It, it, there's, there's a lot of room. This is very high. This is, I'm just gonna make up some numbers. This is 20 feet to the bottom over here. This is like 11 you know, maybe nine. So this is higher ground, it's lower here. Um, so it was, was it, it was never connected? It may have been filled, though. 
No, I can't say if it was ever connected, but it's a result of what we have. Everything's going. I mean, doesn't it make sense if, if this was, you know, the watershed was going this way? Is this, you know, is this the watershed? Yeah, is that the watershed right. line? I don't know. Right. Could be. Um, it could be very close to the divide. I showed you the trees. I showed you the pitch. Hmm. It, it's not that big. Um, natural obstruction, trees. Um, you know, everything seemed to be draining correctly. I mean, this is a bowl with an with a outlet. And then when the outlet, when the water gets up high enough to go out the outlet, that's what happens. We even checked out this area here. Um, you know, usually you would see a lot of leaves and whatnot. Uh, and there are. But fortunately, it's pretty far from the stream. So none of the leaves got into the stream. Not any of the stream was filled up like someone we usually see yard waste in the stream, so it was it was clear. Um, and through here, through this channel, which didn't exist in some sections, it was like four inches deep. So, same over there. So we found two things to fix. But at the end of the day, I don't know if that's going to make a very big difference on, you know, what we're, what we're ultimately going to see here. That was it. That's all. Um, it's being worked on. I'll Did the applicant and engineer and figure out what they're going to do with the sewage in that, that development yet? Uh, so that's why um, Howard Street continued because they just got them their information and it hadn't been reviewed yet. So it seems to me that what the engineering is saying is that there was some sort of future vent going on, but a future sewage that sticks beyond some retaining wall or something like that. So they're saying, well, hey, this thing was is in our property. Can we use it? And the town's evaluating that to see if that's actually <coughs> going to be allowed. I mean, I haven't seen the plans yet, but I'm hearing one side, not hearing from the other side, but the town always evaluates it. So why are we waiting? We just don't know because there might be a, a there might be a section where he'd have to, you know, excavate within the hundred foot buffer zone or change his project a little bit. But he hasn't, you know said that he's he wants us to close. Do <coughs> we have any meeting minutes? 123-2019? I read those. I thought they were fine. Uh, I move we approve the meeting minutes for January 23. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Anything else, Chuck? No. Uh, the NICC conference. Oh, yeah. Sign up and fill out your form. Fill out your forms. I mean, at this point, you guys have to pay for yourself, and then I'll reimburse. I'll be able to reimburse you with the thing. Okay. I don't know what he's doing. We all set. Yep. So make going. a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>